Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. It's a solo mission for me today on Squirrel Hill. Not my usual rifle, this is Bro's S410 on the counter of mine all being poorly sick. Do not even ask, because I don't want to go there. Well, we launch in Barracuda Hunters in 177 calibre. Didn't get out much in 2020 due to lockdown. In between when we were released and in accordance with the rules, this episode is in chronological order from the other ones I've shown you so far this year. You see it's a nice quiet morning. Looks a lot more different on Squirrel Hill than what it did last year. They've been doing some forestry work. You can see out the back there, it's all been chopped down. They've altered the lane for some hardcore down. I can drive right up there really easily. There was a big branch block in my way. It's all been cut back, so I can drive up much easier. Makes it handy for filling up. I've got myself secreted in the hide, pretty much first light. Quite a quiet day. My first go of the year, I do believe. And by first go, I mean my first visit to Squirrel Hill. Don't think I went out before that. Such is the way the year went. Anyway, never mind. Wait, my first visitor. Well, I wasn't waiting for long. It's, you can see that one just teleported onto the branch, which is the point I spotted it and turned the camera on. Camera was already set in position, as you do. I was probably messing around on my phone. I'd come out today because of social distancing. Normally I drive all the way here with Bro. He couldn't make it. Didn't think he'd get his car up here. Normally you come in my 4x4. Makes it a little bit easier. It also saves on the travelling expenses plus the drive's a decent one so being in the car with someone else breaks the journey up it's good to have a good old chat as you're going along the road anyway squirrels on the left hand side of the feeder set the camera up pull back like that so hopefully when i take the shot the squirrels in frame which seem pretty obvious to anyone if you've got a standalone camera you can't work that and the gun at the same time or if you do try to do it you end up missing more than you shoot and our primary reason for being here is to shoot these things. Destructive and annoying to the owners of the woodland. They sat up nice. And I don't make any mistake. 177 pellet finding a mark. Good connection with the skull. And the standard kicking around on the ground. And because it's a bit of a slope, they tend to kick away. Which I always thought was a pretty good advantage. If you've got a slope. I like them to kick somewhere where you can see them still. But the trouble is they built this road up now with hardcore. And they've pushed a bit of this curb up there. Of mud. Pushing, I don't know, 10 inches to a foot deep. 250 300 foot, 250 to 300 mil. And anything that kicks across that little track is difficult to see right close. It's the only problem with it really. You might know from other videos, we're quite interested in the wildlife that come around. Nice to see. They play a bird song in the background. And this squirrel come racing in. I'm not sure which direction. Looking at where he is. He might have come from behind. Possibly. Second squirrel of the day. Looking up for all the world like he's going to go on the feeder. See me messing with the camera, so I'm pretty sure it's going to go on there. I was going to zoom in for a closer shot. There we go. It was kicked quite a way away. I've gone back to the rifle now. Going to pick it up very quietly. Start tracking the squirrel, wait for the head to come to a rest and take the shot. Still fidgeting around. 
and watch it down the scope now. Wait for it to take a mouthful of food. Which is pretty much certain to do, isn't it? Not this time. I'm not here to wound them and have them run away. I don't know why that one didn't take a mouthful. These things are sent to try us. Quite frustrating. I've laid money on that, taking a bite to eat and getting a pellet to the skull. Can't quite work out why it went to the effort of coming to the feeder, not to really feed, and then go away again. The other squirrel on the ground's kicked away. I think it would be a no brainer to sit there and eat food, but oh well, these things happen. We'll get him again. One of us will anyway. And whether this is the same squirrel, I do not know. It's hard to tell. Could have come from a different direction. Or could have looped back round. He's got the log of doom. If you do do feeders, I do urge you to put a log or two up against a tree. It's very useful. They all seem to run up and down it, as you've seen in earlier videos. If you remember one of our first visits we had to this place, when I moved my feeder up to this particular location, that branch popped against a tree, it was further over to the left. It's a dead branch going nowhere and a squirrel just ran up it, ran to the end almost, nowhere to go, had to run back down it, so I think they're predisposed to run up things. I know for a fact if you have a log on the ground, if you can pull it over, it makes a little highway, I no doubt stinks of other squirrels after a few of them down it, so it becomes their highway, and if it goes directly to your feeder, all the better. Anyway, while I was talking, I was taking aim. I do know you like to hear me incessantly chatter on, so many comments about it. Can't be trolls, can it? it? Must be because you love me. You love to hear me talk even more than I did before, so I've been trying harder not to leave any blank spaces. So you can just listen to the birds without hearing me go chatting about whatever I'm looking at on the telly. Thanks for all the feedback. That's squirrel two on the deck. Two out of three, but I didn't shoot the other ones, that don't count. You see the one Simpson's done a great job. Always pick an accurate pellet over a powerful one. Unless we're talking nuclear powerful. Pretty much switched off, all that kicking. All gone by the wayside now. The link in the description to Ted Beer's video. Tell you precisely why you'd do it if you didn't know already. I caught this right at the corner of my eye. I'm not sure what it's doing there. Zoom in. I'm only looking for a little hole in my hide. I end up zooming in with the camera to try and look at it on the screen. Just again, it's quite a small screen, much smaller than you're watching. Even editing this video, my screen's probably about 6 by 4 inches when I'm actually looking at on the editing software. I didn't pay attention to the one that's dead under the log. That's another reason for the logs. The run up over the dead body is a lot easier if we're a bit nervous. That one hasn't given that one a second glance, has it? Some spilt grains, I think, on the ground. Sometimes I'll put little piles here and there in order to stop them on this as they come in. And that one's decided to eat Just some spilt grain by the look of it. Oh no. Is it going to run away? And because I was tracking it with a rifle, I couldn't care less about the video, to be honest. I could track it with a video and I probably would have lost it. But I managed to get it to stop still for a second. I take the shot. Reload. You can see where it's kicking there. I think I stopped it just under that tree. I'd much rather get the shot than chase it around the camera. I've got a film crew with me to do it for me. Actually, you should have rightly guessed if I'm looking down the scope. I can't be looking at the camera's picture. I'm not about to lose them just because of that. Anyway, by the by. Deal. See the car park there. A little track they cut into the woodland. 
perfect really, just back straight into there, far enough away. I could turn my car around. You can see this curve I was talking around earlier on. Hello, sit there. It's right on the top of the curb. It's decided to forage. Pretty much inbuilt into these. The forage on the way to the feeder. Soon became pretty apparent that squirrel's not going to go anywhere. So I've sped the video up for this bit. Otherwise, you just get to sit there watching it. Five times speed, give you an idea. I zoomed in on it just to see what it was up to. I'll zoom back out now, I'm getting the rifle ready to take a shot. Back to normal speed again. I'm trying to get the good sight picture, wait for it to keep its head still, which it is doing. I have to aim a bit high on this, because you'll know the pellet coming from the rifle barrel below the scope is going to be climbing at this point. Turn to look at me in time to eat a pellet. And as I was saying, when they're really close, you'll find the pellet still climbing. You'll shoot low very close. That's just because there's a difference between where you're looking through and where the pellet comes out of. There's a difference there. The pellet being below the sight line. If that makes any sense. So I aimed a bit high for that. Just on the top of its head. So we get another squirrel on the deck. I'm quite happy with that shot. The recenter the camera. The squirrels come dashing in here. Let's go to the feeder. Before that chance to get the camera on. This is more like it. Just sit still anywhere there. See him on the sniff? Or her. A bit of a sniff and a scratch. Is he going to sit still on there or is he going to come to the feeder? Seems to be more and more of these don't come to the feeder properly. That'll do though. Sit still. And I'll shoot you. So a proper kick around that one. It's only nerves, destroyed brain. Stops the way it inhibits the spinal neurons from kicking. So this disinhibition of them causes the muscles to have their last flail. It's normally a good sign. Happy with the progress so far this morning, apart from that one that ran away. You never know, I might get him later. I'm pretty sure one of us are going at some point. See all the sounds of the woodland. You can tell what time of year this is. I do believe that's a cold tit. We've done this in other places. We've had blue tits as well. Getting nesting material. At the tail of one of the creatures that would probably kill and eat its babies and eggs. And the colt, if they could grab older one, I've seen them do that as well. Plenty of videos on YouTube, just have a look around for it. Quite fascinating, really. That's where it's contributing to the health and well being of this bird's babies. A very eco-friendly squirrel allowing itself to be recycled in such a way got a mouth full of hair there it's got there or even beak before anyone says it's not a mouth it's a beak i know that you can see at the end of the day i took a picture of that squirrel properly plucked anyway There's a four-legged nesting material supplier. Definitely some of the other squirrels. If I'd been in and picked up, I think I might have done. The one I dropped off camera landed just there. No, maybe not. There's one on the feeder, that's what it is. I always like it when there's two visible. Once you shoot a squirrel, you do wonder how far away the next one is. Well, I know exactly where it is, it's on the other end of that log. So it's doing it what it should do. I've lined up on it. It's waiting for the head movements to settle down. As you'll see in the head movement video, you can get caught out quite easily by then. Here we go. Good 
solid shot there. You can really cock the rifle. And look and see where the other one's got to. If I turn the camera onto it. Quick check of that one. Where's the other one gone? There it is. It's on the tree. It's all just a bit too far to the left of my bike here. You can see it with the camera okay, but getting the rifle over there requires me to fidget around quite a lot more. That feeder was like 12 o'clock. I'd be looking anywhere between 10 and 2. That's sort of field of view, but sort of too far over to the side of my life. When he flees on the tree like that, it's very often a good opportunity for a shot. I've decided he's going to sort of stay there for a while, hopefully. I'll try and get myself fidgeted round in order to take the shot. He'd be twisting a bit. I've got to alter where the sticks are, but I've got a sight picture. I'm ready to take the shot. That's not a good shot, is it? Don't like that at all. It's been at the height. Thanks for having before I can get a second shot on it. take a shot at his head point blank. It's a thing with a poor shot on the head. They don't normally go too far. They might bounce around a bit on the ground, but you can catch up with them, finish them off. So when stuff goes wrong, you can correct your mistake. Don't know what happened there. Couldn't quite work out where it was for a second then. Lost me. Sense of direction. Obviously it's kicked in the hill when I got out the hide. Once you get out the hide, once you've had to break cover for something like this, the smart move is to pick up every dead body around and fetch them back to the hide out the way. And I'll make the most of it, no point in leaving them there. That's pretty much what I'm doing. I'll also be checking each one of them is properly dead by poking them in the eye with a point of my rifle. Wouldn't want to pick one up and get bitten, would I? Even if I do think it's dead, just check. Always pays to. Once they are, you can fetch them back to the hide. I usually got a plastic bag these days for cycling for that purpose. Alright, I'm back in the hide and calm is restored. We've got another visitor to the feeder. You know, the sun's breaking through the trees in the background. That was sat straight up lovely. Used to be the case they all did that. Very rare they didn't, especially when there's nothing on the ground. Never mind, you've got to only shoot what you can shoot. This one seems to be playing ball, so now I'm watching it through the rifle scope. Once they're on there and feeding happily, you've got plenty of time normally. Can't afford to have that head twitch out the way. Like that. Try and freeze him. Click in your tongue, and the shot follows. The more you do this, the more likely you're going to have problems with head movement. And some shots that go a little bit awry. That's precisely why we go for headshots pretty much exclusively with a sub 12 foot pound rifle. Do enough of it, it'll happen to you. And personally, I don't like the idea of wounding anything. You can live with a second shot, not a problem. If it ran off, you tell yourself it's going to die. It may or may not do so. But I'm not here to make animals suffer, I'm here to kill squirrels and only squirrels. Well, having said that, there's a few other creatures on the list that. Uh, only would like removed all legal pest species in the UK. I did say in a previous video I was pulled up on it, talking about air rifle rules in the UK. Don't need a license to sub 12 foot paint, or I'm afraid you do. Do in Scotland. 
the ridiculous ruling they brought in. I'm pretty sure you can't own an air rifle in Ireland without having one as well. More than Ireland, that is. Anyway, the reason I mention it is wherever you are, check your rules. And if you move somewhere else, check the rules there as well. There we go. We shot them off here before, should be no problem, eh? Wait for it. I don't know what I shot there, but it wasn't the squirrel. I think I was very close. I think I missed its head. Or hit its ear or something. It ran away like a stabbed rat. Didn't look like a squirrel that had taken a pellet to the head. Hate it when that happens. Don't know why. Bad scope camel. I might have been able to tell if I pulled a shot or what happens. Maybe I should get one again. It's better to know than not know. Could have been a pellet even. Did a fair few shots afterwards. Just to make sure that the rifle hadn't suddenly been knocked for some reason. It hadn't. So you know the options is me pulling the shot or the maybe the pellet being a bit bent possibly. Both my fault. Once I convinced myself that that was the reason that it wasn't the rifle or the equipment. I decided to stay and take some more shots. Business is resumed. So that one come racing straight in sat there. See the way the light keeps changing the way the clouds are moving. One minute the sun's getting into this part of the wood then it isn't. This we're going to do. Looks like it might mess about. Let's speed him up a bit. Looks a bit like an expectant father pacing in the waiting room, waiting for the first child to be born. Can't quite wake up its mind what it's going to do. Eventually comes to rest on that bottom branch. Look at the dead body on the ground. That's a fatal mistake, isn't it? Don't care how they come to rest and sit still. Sometimes hang like that. It's a muscle spasm. And they relax and drop off. Those little claws will dig into anything. And it's a sharp. Not surprising they can run up trees so easily. Barracuda hunter seem to be doing a good job. Quite pleased with them. Comes a head pheasant. This is a pheasant shoot as well. They run one every year. We're not allowed to come here during the pheasant shooting season. Only after, outside of the actual season itself. We often see some of the escapees. It's not been a lot going on this year. We're all locked down. happens is anything that gets spilled onto the ground by the squirrels, whether they scratch it out or drop it, they'll come along and mop it up. So it's a bottom fat you feed her and all hit the ground. Between deers, badgers, all species of birds, etc etc, and even squirrels, it'll all disappear and you'll wonder where it went. And if they pig on it every day for a week, several times a day, it'll soon disappear. Especially if you bring their mates along. We're not allowed to shoot it, it's in a season, we ain't got the permission anyway, so... Pretty birds, as I said before. I do like seeing the females as well as the males, all those showy colours. These are just as pretty when you get close to them. Gives you something to watch when the squirrels turn up. This particular location in the woods has brought me face to face with quite a lot of wildlife you wouldn't normally see kicking around. Obviously you see these out and about, but you normally see the males more than the females. Such fantastic coloration. They sit still in the grass, very difficult to see. Pretty obvious here though, isn't she? 
pigging out on her own. I'm just content to watch her, gives the impression it's nice and safe by the feeder if there's a squirrel watching. Very often gets the attention of a squirrel. There's a bit of spilt grain on the ground, they see some males feeding. Pretty sure they'll come over and investigate. Didn't have to wait long really after the pheasant disappeared. 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. That's what I like to see. The squirrel comes straight in, knows what it wants. Must have been a regular here before. Knew exactly what to do with a the lid. They soon figure it out. See teeth marks all over the polycarbonate. Best of luck with that fella. It's very difficult to cut at the best of times, even with your teeth. That will do. Once they sit still like that, you can see the body language. It was nice and calm and confident. It wasn't twitchy. I was very confident in that shot. I'll obviously put the rifle down now. Back to the camera, zoom in so I can get a better look. Just to make sure I've done the job properly. All seems good. and stalked its way back in again. As you can see I've been out and cleared the deck. Sometimes it pays to do that. All sorts of noises, dogs in the background. Lots of woodland birds. victim in a hurry. Not normal for seeing things in the woodland move so quickly unless there's something wrong. They're either trying to eat something or trying to avoid being eaten normally. I suspect there might be another squirrel nearby but you never know. Nothing on the ground to upset it but there's plenty of smell around. That's that. There's been asking previous comments on other videos or things we've seen in the last decade or more of shooting these things on video when you go back over the footage you can have piles of blood everywhere and they don't seem to be phased by it it's not the sort of smell that puts off a squirrel that's just down to knowing your quarry really obviously if it was a fox it could smell it I'm trying to get its attention off just a little bit too long there. Like I said about knowing your quarry, when they hear a sharp noise, it normally causes them to freeze and stare in the direction of the noise, which will cause the legs for a straight on or a quarter in the headshot, just as we like to see them. Quite happy with 12 squirrels today, though it could have been a baker's dozen rather than just a dozen. I'm sure we'll catch up that one another time. I'm sure it'll get over its panic and narrowly missed by a pellet. But I'll take that. We'll be bringing you some more action from Squirrel Hill in these future coming weeks. There they all are. The Bros Rifle. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you.